to You've be been in with the you. entertainment industry since you were 14? Yeah. At what point does it go from just luck to I'm anointed for this? Because let me tell you, like... Since you've been in the entertainment industry, so mm-hmm. many different voices have come and gone. But God has given you grace throughout different seasons to always be relevant. That's crazy. And that means that God trusts you with a platform because he feels like what he placed down on the inside of you, the world needs to see that unique expression of who you are. Thank you. So it's not just luck, like you are anointed to do it. Thank you. I never saw it that way. In the yeah. anointing part, I've never heard anybody say it that way, but um I'm a I'm a very I'm a very hard worker and I think I've always heard the phrase that says, um, like luck can get you in the room. But they say like, oh, but talent will keep you in the room. Mm-hmm. I think like integrity hard work, good work ethic, show up to work like 30 minutes early if you can't. Like I I really do believe that those things are true. I feel like God gives you clues about yeah. who you are when you're too blind to even see them. Yeah. Because I like to tell this story all the time about when I first got pregnant and I was 13 and, you know, you know, people were struggling and, you know, because no one expects for you to have a child at an early age. And so I was giving people room and space to feel however they were going to feel. But there was someone in particular who said something to me and it like stung. And I didn't even realize it stung because I just kind of like gave people space to kind of like, oh, they're in their feelings. They can be in their feelings. It's fine. At 13, you were able to process like that? Yeah. That's so dope. Like, they're in their feelings. This is about, this is something Yeah, about like, this is, but they said, um, I always knew to expect something like this out of you. And, like, that just stuck with me forever. And then we were about to do tour in February for Woman Evolve, and I just started feeling so inadequate, so just, like, unqualified. Like, we had sold out this tour, and I'm like, people are coming, and they want to hear from you, and, like, what are you going to say? Like, you don't have what it takes to get up there, and people are like, oh, I'm coming to get my life, and you don't have any life to give. Like, so I'm having all of these negative thoughts, and my husband's up there preaching, and we're supposed to be leaving right after that tr- after that service, and I'm just like, God, I don't know. I don't know if I'm about to embarrass myself. I don't know if I like ran out ahead of you and now I'm just out here doing my own thing. And so I'm like worshiping, I'm crying. And those words that had sung for like years, I mean, 17 years since they had been said, I just heard God say while I was worshiping, like I always knew to expect something like this out of you. And those words that had like just hit me like when I was 13, just showed back up at 30 and was wow. like, God knew all along what he had placed down on the inside of you. And that's why I don't think you're just lucky to be in the position that you're in. And I don't think it's just hard work, though. I do think that hard work has a lot to do with it. I think God always knew to expect something like this out of you. That's, and when I have moments like that, that one song, um, all my life, you have been faithful. Yeah, yeah. It's my favorite song, and I will boohoo crying. Like, if I think about it, I'll cry. I'm not playing these games with you. <laughs> okay, but, like, when I think about my life, I'm just like, oh, you're so good. And I get overwhelmed by the idea of, like, you pick me. Don't do that. It's like, <laughs> you, do you, that. you let me have such dope opportunities, and I'm grateful And I try to express that on the show in the best way I can. I'm not playing these games. <laughs> but I, I really try, like, I'm, and I'm not like an emo person. See, it's talking to you. <laughs> but I, I, I recognize, and I always say that it's like my grandmother or my mom, because they're such dope prayer warriors, and they've prayed for me my whole life. And there are moments that I just have, and I'm like, God, you're so good. Like, what? Like, I, I be in awe. Like, why are you so good to me? Like, why do you keep giving me opportunities and opening doors for me? And I'm so grateful for it. But at the same time, like, if somebody asks me, why do you think? I, I promise it's you. I really don't know. But I do recognize that I've had an extraordinary life, a career. Um, 
and I'm I'm grateful and I try to do the best I can. And I, that's what I want to be intentional about. It's like recognizing that, having those moments and going, well, what am I going to do with this now? Yeah. Like I have this, I recognize this. How, what do I do now? Do I tell little stories like this? And then I have moments where I'm like, this is so insignificant. You yeah. know, like, okay, my dad had subtitles on the, on the TV, like, 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 and then you doubt yourself. You'll have conversations with yourself. You're like, this is so corny and insignificant. Like, what does this even mean? Um, but I am so, I'm so grateful. Like, I, I, I really do think it's my mom and my grandmother's prayers. And I, I want to be that for my children so that one day I can have a daughter and a granddaughter that's sitting in a bed having a conversation going, yo, my life has been so incredible and just been blessed. And I say so incredible and I make it sound like it's been all amazing, but I really do believe like God has been so good to me. Like we all go through our things and I've had terrible moments and really some struggles and whack times in my life where I'm like, what was me? My life was so whack, right? But the good has outweighed the bad. And I've, that song, Goodness of God, literally, yeah. I'm really mad it's I didn't write it. After me. I'm so mad I didn't yeah. write that song. <laughs> like It's so like, good. Literally word for word, like the second verse where it says, um, uh, I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, mm -hmm. and I have lived in the goodness of God. Or just the, the line where it says, um, like, I will sing. Like, I don't care what happens in life yeah. or what happens from here on or what I've gone through. Yeah. Like, all my life you have been faithful and all my life you've been good to me. So I will sing of the goodness of God forever. And I try to, it, that's such a song. That's how I want to live my life. And now it's just a question of how do I do it? Like, how do I do it in jewelry? How do I do it with a bag? How yeah. do I do it on a on my platform? For you to like, you get what I'm saying. But and don't you don't you think that that's you matching God's faithfulness? Like God gives you an opportunity, and you treat yeah. that opportunity as seed, and you place it back in the ground so that it can become everything that God said yeah. that it could be. So it's not just a talk show. I mean, it's the parable of the talents. Like every time God gave you a talent, you went and multiplied it, yeah. and I think that shows that you've been faithful too. And God partners with those who are faithful. I was supposed to speak somewhere, and you know, we had to get up like four o'clock in the morning and catch the flight, and we had done tour, and then we didn't even go home after tour. We just started like I. My husband spoke in Dallas. I had to speak in Charlotte. And we were like still boom, boom, yeah. boom. And we were home for maybe a week. And then we were supposed to get on the road again. And I was, my alarm clock went off at 4 o'clock in the morning. And I could not pull from that side of me. You know you have to pull from a side of you to like get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Like, because who wants to be up? It's my life. Okay. So I was trying to pull from that side of me. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I can get up and I can do it and catch these connecting flights and be in this Oof. city. Okay. But it was hard. And I felt mentally and emotionally just completely unstable. And I text, I was supposed to speak for Christine Kane and I text Chris and I was like, I can do it if you really need me to, but I'm telling you right now, I don't have anything. And she told me, you know, I care about you, not what you do, whatever. But then I felt so much guilt. Like, God, you've given me this opportunity. I'm not sick. I don't have the flu. Like, you're just tired. Like, tired is whatever. You can get up and you can do it. And I felt like I had started making my relationship with God about performance, mm. which means that, like, there was something that I was doing that was earning these opportunities and not just his faithfulness. Yeah. And so I had to yeah. really, like, come to a place within myself where, of course, I'm going to show up. Of course, I'm going to work hard, but I'm not going to make his goodness be based off of what I do because that hasn't been true the whole time. And to really know that, like, he meets me where I am mm. is what I had to really begin to to really lay hold of and make it my truth because at the end of the day he is faithful and we match his faithfulness but he's not faithful to us because of who we are it's just who he is and at the end of the day if our soul isn't right if our mm. heart isn't right then he cares about us first did you speak i didn't i didn't i stayed home i worshiped i prayed and um, I found myself again. I pray and I hope that the people that look up to you guys and support you guys also recognize, like, if that was you on the platform, like, it's not easy. 
It's not that easy. That is not that is not easy. I tell you what, there's one thing you said throughout this whole chat that I just felt like I can't let the chat in without you knowing. Go on. The grand ki- the kids, your daughter and the grandkids yeah. are going to be sitting on a bed one day thanking God that their mom was Oh, please. It's gonna- I just bo- I just ugly cried like It's happening. You didn't ugly cry. It was real cute. It was a, I couldn't breathe for a minute. There. I was like <laughs> It's fine. Look at you. I was surviving. about to hit you with the <laughs> <laughs> You're surviving.